Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use a texture roller from Green Stuff World to do bases really quickly. So I've got here a completed base that I've already painted up just to show you what the results you'll get from a Green Stuff roller. And I'm going to go ahead and just repeat this process on a brand new base. So obviously you're going to need a Green Stuff roller. Now Green Stuff World sells these with a bunch of different patterns. I've chosen the mesh pattern myself. And the roller is basically a repeating pattern of panels with different meshes on it. So there's some hex grids, some, you know, diagonals and so on, and just different sizes. So you can kind of just use different sections of this to get different bases. So when you're doing a lot of smaller bases like this one, you know, you can get one here, one here, one here, pull it over and do the same thing again, and just get a lot of different looks from one roller on a whole bunch of bases. So you're going to need, obviously, a blank base. You're also going to need some green stuff roughly equal amounts of blue and yellow. You'll also want to have some clean water nearby just to keep the green stuff moist so it doesn't stick to the rolling pin. So first you just want to mix your green stuff up thoroughly until it's a nice consistent green. You do that by just folding it over and over. I like to sort of give it a bit of like a toffee pull sort of motion so you just get a little bit of extra mixing in while I'm doing the folding. You want to just roll that into a rough ball center that on your base and then just wet your finger a little bit and start to mush it down and what you want to check is that you want to give basically the whole base about one to two millimeters of coverage and you want to just bring it a little bit past the edge of the base so you shouldn't be able to see the actual bevel you should kind of hide it with just a little lip of green stuff all the way around you just want to Make sure you keep that surface wet. Make sure you can work it very easily with your thumb. If it's not wet, it'll actually stick to your finger quite a bit. And you want to just make sure it's relatively level. Otherwise, when you go to roll the green stuff roller over it, you'll get some areas where the texture is just a little bit deeper than others. It's not too bad. You can usually just use the base anyway, but it's better if you can avoid it. And there is our prepared base. So you can see all the way around the green stuff's coming, you know, maybe one to two millimeters past the edge of the top of the base. It's basically the size of the bottom of the base. And what we want to do then is just make sure, again, this is still wet. You might also then want to use something like poster tack to keep the base in place while you're applying the roller to it. So in this case, I'm just going to put a little bit down on the desk gently push the middle. I don't want to push too hard because I don't want to upset what I've already done here. I don't want to, you know, disperse the middle out. But we're probably good enough there. And again, just make sure it's fairly damp. Then we're going to just take the roller and pick a section of it. Let's go right here. And then just push it in. And you don't want to just make sure you apply even pressure as you go. So it doesn't slide around. And there we are. So now I'm going to lift that up and just inspect it. So you can see the pattern is a little bit shallow here. We sort of lost a couple of these little dimples, but not too many. I could very easily cover that up by just making sure the foot of a marine sat there. Or, you know, maybe glue a little bit of dirt or something else on the base to cover that up. Otherwise, it's really not too bad. I mean, it's just a little bit shallow compared to the rest. And that will come with practice. You'll get less and less of that happening the more of these you do. But again, you can just, you know, make sure a Marine's foot is sitting there and that'll cover it up or whatever army it is you're doing. So I'm just going to leave that now to cure, which, of course, with green stuff takes between two to four hours before you can really start to paint and work with it. So here I've got a base that I've already completed. You can see, again, I've got a little bit of a low spot here, but overall the detail's good, and it does extend out past the edge of the base. And so well, the next thing you have to do is just cut that extension away. And I just like to just get the knife in there, and just follow the bevel of the base. Now, it looks like I'm cutting towards myself, and I guess technically I am, but... I'm only moving the knife about, you know, a millimeter at a time here. It's very, very short movements because I'm constantly readjusting so it's always beveled to the base. 
And you want to be careful that you're not cutting away the base itself. You only want to be cutting the green stuff. And you want to give it a once around, just to kind of see if anything looks out of place. You've got some areas here where the green stuff's still hanging down below the lip. And so I'm just going to repeat here. It's just almost like peeling a vegetable. Alright, there we go. Just clean that up. So then, of course, all that's left to do is actually to paint the base. So here I'm just applying a quick base coat of Reaper Noir Black, which is a slightly off black color. It's got a little hint of gray to it. Of course, you could just use Citadel Abaddon Black or really any other color you want. Nothing says this has to be black. I just like to start there myself. Of course, you want to make sure you paint the side of the base as well, because you don't want that exposed green edge showing. This would actually be an excellent time to be using an airbrush. All right now that that black coat is mostly dry, I'm going to begin dry brushing this with lead belcher. I'm going to repeat that with a little bit of Rune Fang Steel. Now on this particular base, or this particular section of the roller, there's a couple areas of hazard stripes. I'm going to go ahead and just paint that with a little bit of Averlin Sunset. You know, just give the base a little bit more interesting coloration. I'm going to actually dry brush that with a little bit of Night Hunt Gloom as well. And normally this isn't a color we would use for dry brushing, but it works surprisingly well. You can see, as it goes on, it just starts to give a very light blue tint to an area. Now, there's still a little bit of the Rune Fang Steel on the brush as well, so it is also lightening things as it goes. And that's okay. Similarly, add a little shade to the opposite side with a little hex ray flame. Again, not really a dry brushing color, but you can dry brush everything if you're so inclined. You see, it's just applying a very light coat of green to the area. Just maybe up here, like there's a little bit of, you know, some LED lighting on the wall somewhere nearby. Nothing too exaggerated. Now so I'm going to dab just a little bit of rust on with some Citadel Rise of Rust. I'm just going to dab that in a few different areas.
Then I'm just going to take some Agrax Earthshade and just wash down most of the base. So first I'm starting with a deep recessed wash into the panel lines. basically repeat that over the grid areas. I want to fill in each of these little you know, sections of the grid, make them look a little bit deeper. Should actually kind of look like, you know, there's a crawl space or something underneath the grid as opposed to just being, you know, another sheet of metal a couple millimeters below it. Just let that dry. All right, it's been a little while and all of the paint is finally dry. But of course the base is kind of just a random disc without a model on it. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I've got here a Howling Griffin Space Marine with a couple just pins in the bottom of the feet. What I want to do here is just kind of figure out where they're going to sit best. So what I want to do is just check the base, make sure there are no areas that I did want to cover with the feet. And in this particular case, there really weren't. It's a little bit light just towards the edge here, but nothing too substantial. We can kind of, you know, put a foot over there, though, to cover it. And being Marines, of course, their stance is pretty wide and tends to actually go a little bit off the base anyway. So here I'm just checking the face to make sure if I do drill those two holes, the model looks pretty well centered. Kind of interesting. And I think we're good there. And there's two. So then I just want to do a trial fit before I go ahead and start putting super glue down in case I, you know, mess something up a little bit. But that's a pretty solid fit there. So you can actually just super glue the pins from the bottom. You don't need to glue the feet down because you're basically gluing paint to paint at that point, which is not terribly productive anyway. Here I'm just using a little bit of Gorilla Glue. I'm just going to apply it to the bottom of each pin. And just wait for that to dry. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's plenty more here on YouTube. You can also join me twice a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday and Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, where I do stream my painting live. If you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Even giving as little as a dollar a month helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing. You can also help by hitting subscribe here on YouTube or sharing this video with some friends. Thanks a lot!